I am Charles Capps, and we have a special guest with us uh, today on the broadcast, and maybe for several broadcasts, we'll be talking about quantum faith. Now, I know what you're thinking about. What in the world is quantum faith? Well, you know, the Apostle Paul in Romans 8 chapter says, in verse 2, for the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. There's a law he's talking about here. We have the law of gravity. We have the law of, of physics and, and all of these things. But Paul says in the eighth chapter of Romans, the carnal mind is enmity against God, not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. In other words, you can't believe with your head what you can believe with your heart. But if you get a hold of the law of faith, uh, it works, and it works well because it's a law of God. Uh, we're going to be talking about quantum faith. My daughter, Annette, has authored the book, Quantum Faith, and how in the world did you get started on quantum faith, quantum mechanics? And it's, it's bizarre, some of the things. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, it is very bizarre, even to the phys physicists who study the area of quantum mechanics, because things don't operate in the micro realm in the quantum area like they do in classical physics, like the law of gravity. I mean, in the law of gravity in classical physics, um, every time you jump off of the second story uh, building, you go down, not up. <laughs> You know, and Never you just ex you expect that. You know that. It doesn't matter whether you jump, whether you drop a ball, what happens. That happens every time. But when I started getting interested in the area of quantum mechanics or quantum physics, I kind of did it just because it was a little fascinating to me. But as I began to read and study, I realized that, you know, that sounds exactly like what my dad has always taught and what the Bible says. All of a sudden, the things that Jesus said and the things that are even in the Old Testament began to make sense because they operate outside the laws of classical physics, like the axe head that floated. That, that's not normal, okay? <laughs> but, but there is some law that enabled that axe head to float that superseded the known laws of physics. And if you get into the fact that Jesus walked on water, well, I don't know anybody that, you know, uh, can walk on water and not sink because a classical law of physics says that a 180-pound man is dense and he goes through the water. But Jesus knew something that enabled him to walk on water, to walk through walls, and to heal the sick and do all manner of things that classical physics say is impossible. So it just um, began to amaze me that actually the encoded in the Bible, we see examples of quantum physics and how that works, especially when it comes to the law of faith and how faith operates. That's interesting because, you know, when Peter walked on the water, he did walk on the water, mm -hmm. but uh, he began to observe the wind and the waves, and fearing, he began to sink. In other yes. words, uh, the faith was there, the ability was there to, to do that, but something that had nothing to do with what he was doing caused him to sink. I mean, you know, he should have been thinking about it this way. I guess the only time you can walk on water is when a storm's on, because <laughs> Jesus was walking on the waves and there was a storm. But, uh, you, you know, nobody can walk on the swimming pool even if there is a storm on. Okay. So there was a different law that he, he caught a hold of for an instant, but fear caused it to diminish to the point that he sank. That's right. And the interesting thing about quantum physics, and those of you who are really freaking out saying, I can't possibly understand this, you can. If you can understand some of the Bible teaching, you can understand what I'm about to say. And that is the thing that uh, physicists have determined is when they began to look at, if you've seen a, a drawing of an atom with all the little um, orbits of the electrons around the nucleus and there's a little dot there that looks like a particle. These physicists began to study the particles, but then they determined that, well, you know, they don't really act like particles sometimes. So they came up with what they call wave particle duality. And what that means is that, and listen very carefully, that actually the particle there exists in a wave state, which means that that electron, that little particle, is not 
right there until they look at it. That means it exists everywhere at once in a realm of all possibilities. Does that sound familiar? Sounds all familiar. things are possible, only believe. So that electron in its wave state is everywhere at once like a cloud. But once the observer or the physicist looks at that to measure it, it either collapses and becomes a particle or it only has one location. So now what that means to me about faith is that we have an effect on everything around us, including the waves, including the water, including everything we believe, everything we observe and look at, we affect by our belief or our faith. And so Peter, when he believed he could walk on the water, he looked at that, he saw the possibility, he entered into it. But then fear, which is a lower force, brought him back into the classical laws of physics, and he began to sink. You know, I, I said something to the Lord about that one time. I said, now, Lord, why did you call Peter out of the boat when he didn't have water walking faith? And he said, I didn't do it. And I said, but Lord, I know you did. Uh, he said, turn to it and read it. And boy, I turned to it and I read it. And, and <laughs> Peter said, Lord, if it be you, bid me to come. He said, what was I going to say? No, Peter, it's not me. He had to. He said, if I hadn't have said come, I'd been lying. Mm -hmm. Because Peter painted him. He, this is what the Lord told me. He said, Peter painted himself in the corner. And there's nothing else I could do but mm -hmm. say come. Now, there was enough anointing and, and faith in that one word, mm -hmm. come, from the Lord Jesus, till the man could walk on the water. But... Then he began to observe circumstances, situations, and things that had nothing to do with what he was doing. Mm -hmm. And fearing, he began to sink. Mm -hmm. And uh, that shows you that fear will take your faith away. That's right. And it doesn't happen all at once sometimes, but, but uh, it, fearing, he began to sink. Have you ever seen anybody step in a swimming pool and begin to sink? <laughs> no, no, they sank. They step in there, they go, chug, they're gone. That's right. So... The, the point was that uh, there was enough uh, power of faith which gives substance to things hoped for. He hoped to walk to Jesus, mm -hmm. and it was giving substance to it until he let it slip from him. That's right. Absolutely. What he believed took him that far on the water. He observed it. Now, the interesting thing about it is, did Peter look at that water and say, I can do that? And by his looking at it and his belief, he actually changed the substance or the solidification of the water and it enabled him to walk on it. How did that work? We really don't know exactly how it worked. But what we do know from quantum physics is every time something is observed, it responds to the observer. And we might say that it responds to us. And I know for years you have taught that we can change things with our words, that words and faith affect things. Now, this, uh, this table uh, looks solid. It absolutely looks solid. It is a thing. It looks solid. But when you get down to the quantum level of it, there are atoms, there are electrons going around the atoms. There is movement in this table, in the actual makeup of the table. That means that it can change forms. If it was burned, it would become energy. Energy becomes uh, matter. Matter becomes energy. But the Bible tells us that we can affect matter because uh, Mark 11:23 says, For verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe, remember Jesus said all things are possible to him that believeth, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. Now, he said, whatso that if you say to this mountain, which is an object, be removed and be cast into the sea, and you believe and doubt not in your heart, that whatever you say, if you believe it, it will come to pass. Now, it may not happen instantly, but it will happen because our words and our faith affect things down to the microscopic level, down to every part of the atomic structure. That's why things will respond 
to faith. Yeah, and and Jesus proved that uh, in in every situation. Uh, the problem is so many times that people they read and find out what Jesus said, but up here they can't they can't wrap their mind around it. That's why Paul said the carnal mind is enmity against God, not subject to the law of God. The law of God he's referring to is the law of faith, which. Like you say, it fits right in with quantum physics, quantum mechanics, and things where uh, it doesn't function as it does in the natural realm. Mm -hmm. So that's why uh, Paul said, faith works in the heart, won't work in the head. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, sometimes I say the reason faith won't work in the head, there's no substance up there. <laughs> <laughs> the substance uh, is in the heart. <laughs> true on many levels sometimes. Mm -hmm. That's right, because... Uh, intellectual knowledge or intellectual belief, you know, you can have an intellectual belief has no force or power to it. But the belief in the heart is what brings about change in the things around you. And if we want to bring it down just to everyday uh, living, then you know as well as I do and so does everyone else out there that if you go somewhere and you expect good things to happen to you, you create something around you that we would call an energy or a force of faith or belief. It is something that is just around you and when you go, you're a magnet to good things. But when you are depressed, down and out, you speak words of doubt, fear and unbelief, then you create another force around you. And that force attracts the negative things to you. So, you know, getting away from just talking about matter and things, we actually do produce energy of faith, an actual energy of faith that draws the things to us that we speak. Yeah, the scripture talks about that uh, the blessings of God will overtake you. And, and that's in the Old Testament, it's only the blessings of the law. Mm -hmm. You know, we're redeemed from the curse, but we're not that's redeemed right. from the blessing. Thank God. And, uh, uh, a humorous story, but it's a true story. Uh, you've heard me tell it, but uh, I won't tell it again myself. But anyway, a friend was with me fishing one time, and, and he kept saying, there's not any fish in here. He said, said, there's not any fish on this side of the lake. We were fishing the lake. He's fishing one side, and I was fishing the other. We were wading water. It was shallow lake. And uh, so it, it, all the way down there to the fishing deal, he was telling me, that I know you're going to catch a lot of fish, but I never catch any fish. I just never can catch fish. Well, I finally said to him, let's trade sides of the lake. So he started walking over to my side, and I started walking over to his side. A bass came out of the water that looked like he weighed five or six pounds and started and jumped about six or eight feet to the side of the lake I was going to. And he said, now they're all going to your side of the lake. And, and I just held it as long as I could. I said, I don't blame them. I wouldn't stay over with all that unbelief either. I'd go where there's some, some uh, positive thing to be unreleased. Right. And I just stopped and, and taught him a little bit on the power of words. I said, one of your problems is, is your mouth. You're speaking doubt, fear, and unbelief, and it creates it. It causes him to do things to cause it, it to happen. But uh, it does, faith creates an aura around you, and it'll draw the blessing of God, uh, and, and the curses will run off of you like water off a duck's back. That's right. Absolutely right. You know, a human, a human story with the fish, but uh, this, is how, this is how it works. This is how faith works. I went to the lake one day with some friends, and they were all on the, the boat, pontoon boat, and they were eating, and I got my fishing pole, and I started fishing off the side, and I started saying, here, fishy, 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 here, fishy, fishy, and they were all looking at me like I was nuts and said, what are you doing? And I said, I'm calling the fish, and they said, what do you mean? They can't hear you. I said, oh, yes, but they do, and I threw out there again, and I started, I caught a fish. And they said, well, that's interesting. I threw out and I caught another fish. I kept calling them and kept catching them. Pretty soon, everybody on the boat had a fishing pole going, here, fishy, fishy, fishy. <laughs> well, what, what they didn't realize is that I believed it. Yeah. You brought me up to believe I could catch fish. And that is on the inside of me. I believe it. I know it. I can catch it. And so as a result, that comes to me and it happens. But it comes to you in many different ways. If you believe you're going to be successful and prosperous in life, then it's like fishing. You're throwing it out there whether you realize it or not by the words you speak, by what you believe, what you say. 
if you believe that you're going to live in health, then you're throwing it out there with your words, with your beliefs and what you're saying. It works. It works. Even if you don't believe it works, it works. You know, it's, it's interesting when we talk about quantum physics, quantum mechanics, that, that uh, the placebo effect, uh, I was reading an article from the Mayo Clinic, uh, and it talked about the placebo effect. And, you know, any new medicine that's approved by the FDA has to be compared to placebo. And uh, the placebo works in the power of belief. There's, there's no ability in that uh, sugar or flour that they put in that to heal anyone. But even if they will use the right color that people like, it will help and it will actually uh, do wonders for some people and in just a few hours, which uh, no, no medicine could work that quick. And they say that if you take them off of it, then they have withdrawal symptoms. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, and what it is, the power of belief. Yes. And it is, uh, it supersedes all of our natural thinking. That's right. And, uh, and that's, that's why that uh, so many people get confused about it, because we're talking about two different realms. You're, you're talking about a law of God that works because of what His Word said. And, and the fact that these, uh, you say that it exists in a cloud until you... A Someone of, goes to observe yes, it. A then cloud it, of possibilities. Then, then it's just the possibilities. Well, when I think about this, Jesus said, Seek and you shall find. Mm -hmm. So when they saw that thing, they found it. It appeared. Mm -hmm. and, and what we're talking about is a law of God that is calling things that are not as though they were. Now, now listen to this verse in uh, 1 Corinthians, the first chapter, verse 27, 28. But God has chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. God has chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty, and base things of the world, and things which are despised as God chosen, yea, now listen to this, and things which are not, to bring to naught things that are. Things you can't see, couldn't see, and that's what the Scripture it said, bring to naught things that were. God spoke words and there was darkness out there. You don't get but three verses in Genesis. You see God calling things that are not. Looked out and saw darkness and said, Light be, and light was. Uh, this is the law of faith. And it, it, it is a different area from what our minds are used to. That's why Paul said the carnal mind is enmity against God, not subject to the law of God. You have to study this law of God. You have to meditate it, confess the word until you believe. Like you say, uh, people that say, well, I'm going to try that. It's not going to work, probably, because they don't believe the words they say. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, I remember John Osteen said this, late John Osteen said one time he was fishing a little pond they had. Wasn't getting any fish at all. And he said he'd heard me tell stories about catching the bass. And he said, Lord, if this work for Charles Capps, it'll work for me. He said, I'm going to catch a big bass. I'm going to catch a big bass. And he, he said, so help me God. Next throw, I caught a four-pound bass. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, the scripture that you just read talks about things that are not seen, things that are not seen. In the quantum realm, they don't even know if anything even exists there until they try to look at it. Yeah. They don't even know if there's anything really there. And so it's just all kinds of possibilities. And so it is in our lives. There are multitudes of possibilities. And how you look at it, how you believe it, brings it out of the unseen realm. You know, you can't see an electron. You can't see a, a particle. You can't see a quark. You can't see those things. But they can be brought into this realm where they are seen. And evidently, that is the way of God's creation. He spoke. He brought the seen world out of what cannot be seen. And he also created us in his image. So if we are created in his image, and he's given us the ability to bring things from the unseen into this realm and even change the things that are seen and remove obstacles. So that is all a part of how God made us in God's image and likeness to be creators. We create our lives. We make the decision. Words are building blocks. 
which we construct our life and future. And uh, so many people don't realize that, that the things they're saying determines what they believe because faith comes by hearing. And uh, when they get on negative things, the more they say it, the more they believe it, the more they believe it, the more they say it, 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 it feeds on itself. It's like one of those little squirrel wheels. Yeah. It just goes round and round and round and round and round. And like somebody said, a friend of mine said, well, now I know that faith stuff works for you, but said, it doesn't work for me. Oh, yeah. He said, I, I, I don't get what I say. He said, I, 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 it just doesn't work for me. He said, oh, yeah, it's working for you. Mm -hmm. You said it didn't work, and it's not working. That's right. If it wasn't working, it'd be working when you said it wasn't working. That's right. <laughs> so, Jesus works. said you can have what you say. Now, now to the carnal mind, that just makes you, you know, people just think, well, oh, that's just too far out. Oh, well, the first time, if you really looked at uh, Mark 11:23, that you could speak to a mountain, believe it in your heart, and it'd be removed, you know, you look at that and you go, that, that's, a, that's just not possible that that can happen. But that's because you're looking at classic laws of physics, or what we call the natural world. But God's laws supersede far and above the natural laws. And if we can learn how to tap into the, the laws that God has given, the spiritual laws, then we can supersede, we can change all kinds of things. If we don't believe that we can change things, then why do we pray? Yeah. See, we pray believing that somehow that that is going to change. And prayer does work. But it also works in just in our beliefs and everything we do and our perceptions in life. We bring those things to us. So if we learn anything from quantum physics, it can be that God's laws supersede. And I really believe that in quantum physics, we find some of the laws of faith in that there is a looking to and observing of your life, of the, your circumstances. If you look at the mountain of debt in your life and you say, that's the biggest mountain of debt I've ever seen, I'll never get out of it, then you won't. But if you look at that mountain of debt and you look at the fact that Jesus said you can speak to a mountain. Now, he meant you could speak to a literal mountain, but you could speak to a symbolic mountain of debt also and see it removed by speaking to it. Now, the important part is that you actually believe it. And you said that words are what we use to program ourselves to believe. A lot of people have been programmed from their parents or society that they will never succeed, that they will never get out of debt, that they will never be healed, etc., etc. But words are powerful enough, and God's word is the most powerful that we can take. And we can program ourselves to change our beliefs so that we can have the blessings of God running and overtaking us. That's true. Uh, it's absolutely true. And, and uh, the, what Jesus said is, whosoever shall say to the mountain, be removed, be cast in the sea, doubt not his heart, believe what he saith, and come pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. Therefore, what things soever you desire, when you pray, believe you receive them. In other words, pray the desire. Talk to the mountain. Don't talk about it. And, and some of the people that say, yeah, well, I wouldn't talk to a mountain. That's just silly. They talk to the mountain every day, but they're saying it's getting bigger. We'll never get over it. Dear God, we'll, I can already see we won't have enough money to pay a, a note on our house this year. We're going to lose our house and our car. They can already see it. They're well on their way because they're programming themselves to make wrong decisions so what they're saying will come to pass, and they don't realize it. And when they say it, then they get this picture in their mind. They see themselves as failing. They see themselves as losing. So they have the image there, they have the words there, they have the beliefs there, and you're right. It's like that little squirrel cage. It just goes round and round and round.